Well, good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. I'm really glad that we can start the day again together, and I mean that. I just love being able to start the day in the company of so many people. It gives me great pleasure, in fact, deep joy and delight. And so I want to begin this morning by asking you this question. Where is home for you? Home is that place where we feel most able to be ourselves. So where is that place that you feel safe and settled? That place where you feel that you belong? Often it has very little to do with place, but has so much more to do with those you hold dear. We feel at home with those with whom we share values, with those who are passionate about similar things. Where do you feel that sense of being at home? At this time of the year, we rejoice and celebrate the coming of the kingdom in the form of Jesus, the Christ child. And we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, with great depth and deep meaning. We sing as if we long to be home in the kingdom of God. We speak as if our sense of home lies in the work and purpose of the body of Christ. Yet, for the kingdom of God to be our home, we have to be willing to let go of our own kingdom. We cannot call God's kingdom home and yet actually find ourselves more at home in places that are really crafted and shaped to meet our needs. We may say that Jesus is Lord of our lives, but in fact it is in name only, for we are still firmly in control with no intention of surrendering our lordship. If we refuse to surrender the lordship of our lives, if God's kingdom is nothing but our occasional holiday home, then we will find ourselves doing what all kings do. We will find ourselves defending and protecting our kingdom. And like earthly kings, the only way we know how to do it is to lord it over others. So we become involved in constant power battles, always jostling for position. We may say that we have submitted to the lordship of Christ, but nothing could be further from the truth. We are far more in love with our own turf than we are in love with the kingdom of God. Our turf can be our family, our work, our church, our culture, our nation. If we want to know where our home is, just watch. Just watch what happens when your turf is criticised. Notice your reaction to that. Notice how quickly you become protective and how quickly you develop a them and us attitude. But for God, all turf is his turf, for he knows no boundaries. National boundaries mean nothing to God, so it is ludicrous for any country, any tribe, any group to claim God as theirs. God is is as much the God of the USA as he is the God of Russia or China or Liberia or South Africa. Our church is of no more significance to God than the one down the road that we might like, in fact, to look down on. 
You cannot say, come Lord Jesus, come, yet live as Lord of your own kingdom. And so we need to wake up to the reality of our lives, the reality of whose kingdom it is that we call home. How easily we sleepwalk through life. We live from one moment to the next completely oblivious of Jesus in our midst completely oblivious to our own desire to be in control and to confine God to small pockets of our lives. Pockets such as church on a Sunday, prayer, saying grace. Our lives become more and more divided between our kingdom and God's kingdom which of course we may visit sometimes on high days and holidays. This kind of living on autopilot, half asleep, half asleep to our, to our lives and how we live them, is disastrous to our spiritual well-being. Advent is a time to wake up. To wake up to living in anticipation of each day being lived at home in God's house. We need to be attentive and awake as citizens of God's kingdom so that we do not miss seeing the king. It means living in the expectancy that we will be surprised by grace and mercy as they break into our lives at any moment to touch us in new ways. If we are asleep and distracted, we will miss the gifts of Advent. So how do we wake up? Choose to receive each day with gratitude and joy. Choose to appreciate the simple things such as your early morning tea and give thanks to God. Choose to open your eyes to whatever is before you without wanting to control it, dominate it, own it, or defend it. Choose to listen carefully to what others are saying and listen without judgment. Choose to give full attention to your work. Choose to appreciate life. No matter what you do, seek to be expectant. Expect Jesus to break into your world afresh. Being awake is about experiencing Jesus where we are, in whatever we are doing at this moment. And so as you go to bed tonight, think over your day. Recall a moment when you were fully awake to the Lordship of Christ in your life. And then remember a moment in which you were simply absent, simply sleepwalking through your life. And notice the different feelings that each of these occasions elicit. And then ask God to help you to stay awake to the presence of his being and spirit, moment by moment. You see, you are at home wherever you are, because God is there, Jesus is there, the Spirit is there, and where you are, you are with God at home. May you live today knowing that you have come home. Amen.